Hello Zany friends and welcome back to my channel. I know I haven't done book content in quite a while but we're gonna do it now. These are all the things that I read in the month of March in case you're looking for more things to read and if you like stats and data I have stuff for you there as well. Uh, right over here I have all of the stats for what I read in the month of March. So for example I read 17 books which was a total of 6,185 pages and basically the majority of my books tend to be between four and five stars but I did have two five stars and four 4.5 stars. So I had actually some six top books this month which was unusual for me. Also this month I tended to read a lot of thriller which made sense because I was in kind of this book funk and I just needed books that would propel me through the month a little bit better. If you're looking for individual reviews for all of these I do have it on my other social media in Instagram and TikTok and so I'll leave those down below if you're looking for something a little more in depth. My first book is Expiration Dates by Rebecca Searle and I rated this four stars. Um, I really do like her writing. It's kind of more of like a magical realism. You know there's like magical elements to it. So this book is about a girl who gets pieces of paper with guys names and then a duration on it which is basically like what guy she is going to date next and then how long it lasts. So there's no surprises there until she gets a note where it has a guy's name and no date and so she's like oh is this the one? Uh, it was it was a it was a good read. Solid romance read for me. Next I read Rules for Rule Breaking and I gave this one actually three. Now this is a YA story about uh, these two college-age kids whose families are friends but they are not and their families make them go on a college road trip to check out places they could conceivably go to school and they get into a bunch of shenanigans and it was just fine. If you like YA you might want to check it out uh, but to me there was just like something missing and I couldn't put my finger on it. So I do a lot of buddy reads uh, with certain people throughout the month and so my first one this month was The Marriage Act by John Mars which I did read with my friends Erin and Francesca and they are usually the ones that I read uh, with although Erin I do read more books with um, which I will get to in a minute. I gave this book a four. Now uh, let me tell you that I thought the writing was good. I thought the story was good and actually terrifying because it was all about like having to be monitored when you're married and getting certain perks if you stay married and it, it's kind of terrifying and there is actually a sequel coming out that I'll probably be buddy reading that as well but to me it ended up kind of unsatisfying and now I understand why so if you like thrillers you might want to think about this one it is kind of crazy how terrifying it is. Next I read Dead Girls Walking which I gave a four star. This is a book about a girl whose father was accused of being a serial killer at a camp that they ran or like they had a house there and so she ends up like he's in jail and she ends up being a counselor at this camp in order to figure out where her mom is because her mom is either dead or missing. This one is a very like paranormal and kind of horror, very gruesome. If you like that in the YA category then this one is one to check out. However for most of the book I have absolutely no idea what was going on. It was like super crazy. So I, I'm just telling you if you like realism this is not your thing. <laughs> Everyone is watching by Heather Gutenkopf. This book was so anticipated for me. I gave it four stars though because other ones just topped it like surprisingly and this book is about like a reality online streaming show uh, where people uh, are trying to compete in like a series of competitions uh, to be able to get money. Um, but then people start um, accidentally dying and it's not, uh, it's, it's actually good fun. I, I thought it was a lot good fun, solid thriller, really enjoyed it. Next book is First Light Wins by Ashley Elston. Now this book is my five star read, one of my first five star reads for the month. Now this book we actually read as part of our Elated Geek book club. Um, if you aren't familiar we have a book club that meets on Fable. You, I would love for you guys to join us. So it's so much fun. Um, but yeah we are reading, we, we read this in the month of March and it was one of those books that I knew nothing about. Just what was on the back flap. I saw that it was at book of the month so I was like let's pick it up. 
and I loved it. My brother loved it. Like, it, it was so good. And it's about a con woman who basically um, is undercover, like, on a job. And some lady shows up with her original birth name and background. And she's like, what is happening? Uh, so it's a lot more complicated than that. A lot more is going on. But I loved this book. If you like thrillers, do it. Pick it up. It's great. And tiny little plug too, if you want to join us for April, we're reading Everyone Who Can Forgive Me Is Dead by Jenny Hollander. So if you want to join us there, I will leave the information to the Fable app down below so you can join us. I would love to have you read the book with us. Next, I have What the River Knows by Isabella Banez, and I am so excited that this book is part of a series. I gave this 4.5 stars, and I did read it with my friend Erin as a buddy read. So I, I tend to think that the books that I read as buddy reads, I like more because I'm able to discuss them with people, like same with book clubs, really. But this book is about a girl whose parents were archaeologists and they die in Egypt and she travels there to find out why and there's like a magical element to it and it is so great. I liked it so much more. Like sometimes I get these books in Owl Crate and I'm like, will I even like this book? So surprisingly I did and I'm glad because it's beautiful and that means I get to keep it on my shelf. Next I have Murder Road by Simone St. James and let me tell you that this book, uh, I rated it 3.5. Okay so th this was on my most anticipated for the month and it was, I, I, I don't know, like it was solid, but I just, there was something about it I didn't like. It's, there is a paranormal element to it. It's about a, a couple who's going for their honeymoon on this one, like, city, but then they, like, take a detour on this road and they pick up a hitchhiker who's been stabbed. And then, like, this truck starts following them and they don't know why. And, um, there's all these connections that are happening and... Like, I really love some of her past books, and I'd say this one is solid, but it just was not m her favorite of mine. Um, but overall, I think, you know, if you like horror books um, and you need something for the summer, this might be a really good read to pick up. Um, I'm actually posting this one on my Pango books if anyone wants that. I'll leave that down below if you want to purchase for cheaper. Next is my other five-star read, and that's Just for the Summer by Abby Jimenez. I loved this book. I love most of her books that make me sob uncontrollably. And like, okay, so something about me that's a little bit of a secret, I do not like to cry when I read books. I'm just not that kind of emotional purge reader. But uh, if a book makes me laugh and cry, then 100% I love it, and this book did. So it's about a couple who believes they're cursed because every time they break up with someone, that person immediately finds their person that they marry. And so they decide, oh, we're gonna just date each other for the summer and then break up. And then the next person we date, we're gonna find who we're gonna marry instead of just being perpetually the one that everybody dates in order to get married. Um, so of course they fall for each other and I was just unprepared for the things that they were going to discuss. There's trauma in this, but like, I felt like overall it, it was just such, it was such a good book. Perfect summer read if you're looking for something that you can just cozy down in and follow these people's lives. And Justin, who is the main character, one of the, the male main character, I love him. He's like the boyfriend that everybody wishes they could have. I fell in love with him, if you can fall in love with a fictional character. So if you like that, definitely pick it up. This book, you're just gonna laugh at me, but I'm throwing it in there because you're going to do the math and be like, dude, that's only 16 books. Okay, so this book is basically a Walt Disney World hack second edition. As you know, we go to uh, Disney World because we have passes and we do a lot of content there as far as like food and like things you can buy. And I wanted to know if what we knew, if there was any secret hacks surviving out there that maybe we didn't know. And guess what? There's not. Um, we actually are very familiar with a lot of the hacks. I did give it four because if you're not familiar with hacks and you're planning a trip to Disney World, this book has a ton of useful information about how to spend money there, about how to save money if you're going, where to look for hotels, if you don't want to stay on property, or if you do, when to go, all those things. Like, it, it, it's just a great book if you're planning a Disney World trip. 
Next, I have the thriller Darling Girls by Sally Hepworth. I gave this 3.5 stars. Now, let me tell you about Sally Hepworth. Um, totally enjoy her books. Solid. I don't think I ever give them above like a 3.5 or 4 because even though I enjoy the books as I'm reading them half the time I can't remember what they're about after I read them. But this book is about a group of girls who are foster sisters together at one specific house and their time period is kind of traumatic and they're only there for a couple of years but then they leave and many many years later they find out that something or someone is buried at the house they used to live at so they all come back and it's kind of interspersed with chapters about what has happened when they lived there and chapters in the present as they're trying to find out who exactly this body is that was buried there and who did it. So it's actually a compelling story, very fast paced, really liked the vibe. But then after I read it, I was just kind of like, oh, okay, you know? Um, so yeah, I mean, again, solid thriller. If you like thrillers, check it out. The next I'm going to kind of combine the two, and I actually physically don't have them here because they're in the other room, but I, Buddy read um, the Curse Breaker series with my friend Erin because she had never read Bridget Kimmerer. If you follow me on social media, you know how much I love Bridget Kimmerer. So I was like, Erin, you need to read these books. And so we read the first two, which is uh, A Curse So Dark and Lonely and A Heart So Fierce and Broken. Um, actually, currently right now we are reading A Vow So Bold and Deadly. Um, but for each of those, I did reread them. They were 4.5 stars for me. I love this series so much. I hope I can convince her to read Defy the Night because I love that series also. Erin, if you're watching this, let's do it, okay? <laughs> Next thriller I have is Daughter of Mine by Megan Miranda, also on my anticipated list. Gave it a four. I actually really like this. Um, I might have liked this better than some of her other books, although I know there are a couple that I like a little bit more. Uh, this book is about a girl who has to return to her home small town uh, because her dad has died. So she goes to the funeral and then because there's a drought, the water level is lowering and these cars are showing up in this lake. And one of them is her mom's car, which is kind of crazy because her mom has left her like 10 years before. So she doesn't understand where is her mom. So she spends a lot of the book dealing with what happened during her childhood and who is responsible for certain things as the water continues to go down and more secrets are brought to the surface. I actually, like I said, really like this book. Um, I thought it was a solid thriller, very good. I keep saying that, these are solid thrillers. These are all solid, okay? I didn't really have anything that I hated this month, so I can say they're all solid. This under one's in the other room too, okay? So I guess I forgot to bring it in, but that's um, Under the Palms by Kyra Rauda. I gave this book 3.5 stars. Um, I actually liked the book, but to me it wasn't as complex as other thrillers I have read. It's actually the second. So the first one is called Under the Surface, and it's about this really like uh, rich Kardashian-like family who's on a like a, their own yacht and someone falls over and, and it's all like this inter-family intrigue and who's going to take over the company and who's cheating on who and divorce and blah blah blah. So the second book, Under the Palms, they're actually at a resort and the Santa Ana winds are a factor in this as well. But it's all about like the company who is going to take over the company um, and the fact that there are a lot of secrets here. There are multiple point of view chapters in this too. So I think it tried to be complicated, but in reality, to me, the characters just needed a little bit more depth. There is another one coming, I'm pretty sure. But uh, you know, if you are looking for something that you just don't really have to think about too hard, but you still like the thrillers, then this one might be one to pick up. Another Owl Crate book that I got that totally surprised me was The Fragile Enchantment, and this is by Allison Saft. And this is, uh, I think I rated this 4.5 stars. Um, this is about a magical seamstress who is called to make the garments for a wedding of the prince um, in her country, or like the country that they have an alliance with or something. And um, it's kind of an arranged marriage. And when she gets there, she realizes that the country is actually in worse conditions than she thought. And so she is still continuing to make these garments while becoming closer to the people in power. 
and it is such a good book. Um, I I absolutely I loved it. I hope there's another one, but I don't think there is going to be. Um, really love the edition I got as well. If you like like a YA magical romanticy, then this one is a good one for you. And lastly, I got this one in right under the wire. This one I rated four stars. It's first year orientation, and this is actually a collection of short stories edited by Lauren Gabaldi and Eric Smith. And full disclosure, I do know, kind of, Lauren because she is the wife of a work colleague of mine. And that was kind of what turned me on to wanting to read it in the first place. I have read their previous book which was Battle of the Bands but this book is all about the first day of orientation at Rollin College um, and it's 16 different stories of people who are attending orientation or who are there the day that it goes. There is a really cool collection of like cultural backgrounds in here. There's two TV celebrities. Um, there's one person who time travels. Uh, there's like I, I, there's like, I don't know, um, a lot of different representation in here that I find to be really cool. But uh, here's my issue with short story collections. And that is that I like to live in, if I'm really enjoying the story, I like to live in it as long as possible. And for short stories, if I really connect to the character, a short story is not long enough for me to live there. And it makes me frustrated just inherently as a person. So I feel like... I loved this book a lot, but I just wish I had more, okay? So I know that pretty much means that I should have rated it higher, but to be honest, I rated it the way I did because that was kind of like the amount that I had for the amount of stories that I liked in general. So yeah, if you like short stories, definitely check out this one and also Battle of Bands, which I also liked. So if you stayed this long, thank you very much for listening to me ramble about books. I would like to know what you guys are planning to read in the month of April. So please make a comment down below and let me know what that is. And until next time, stay zany.